All right, hello. Uh, we're gonna do a quick video here just to review the matchups or the matches that I had for Summoner Duels here. Um, I say quick, but it's probably gonna end up being like 30 minutes. I don't know, let's go over the teams real quick. Um, so this was what I ran this season. Um, as you can see here, uh, I wasn't really too happy with the majority of these captain skills. I think this fault one is pretty not good. It's kind of like just extra damage. Um, but a lot of times what you need is it's you need more than just damage. You need to be able to like Flash of Steel has a lot of creativity because of the desperation effect. Might of Myriads gives you the distant counter. Uh, extra damage isn't necessarily something that's like the biggest deal in the world. And uh, this is also based on um, Dominance Klanda. So you need to be able to debuff the enemy. And debuffs are kind of like in a weird place currently in Summoner Duels. Um, so I ended up running like Flash of Steel and Might of Myriads the majority of the time. Or well, like half and half really. Um, the first two teams... Like, I practiced all of these teams, but the first two teams ended up being bait teams. Uh, primarily because, like, just in usage, I realized that I wasn't very good <laughs> with this Cav team. And you're going to see, um, it's not that the team is bad, it's just that I'm not good at using it. Uh, because that's not necessarily my playstyle. Um, yeah. Uh, I gotta practice more. Like, I'm very, very comfortable with my catcher ball. So this was the main team that I ran, the one with uh, Mark, this one, Celica, and Nino. I ran this team for pretty much every map. Um, and then this one automatically got banned a lot of times because, I suspect, because Balif was here. Um, but really, this team lacked firepower, the Cordelia team. Uh, it needs a lot of work. Um, not strong enough mutes, in um, my opinion. Alm here is really just here because he has Canto Control. I don't have a unit that I can put Canto Control on. Kind of similar to Legendary Crom. Legendary Crom is fantastic because of the amount of damage that he does. If I could swap these two, I would. But I needed someone on this team who could take out... Um, Byleth, and Krom is really the only one that can solo Byleth. Let me change this back real quick, because I ended up not using that. Seal. Uh, ideal. I tend to run the Ideal on him because of the extra stats, and it just synergizes well with his kit. Um, but yeah, I picked that up from Binding Worlds. Uh, what happened here is that the nuke... Um, on this team. I needed a nuke that I could send in as a suicide bomber um, and I was lacking that. That's one of the reasons that this team kind of uh, failed. This team is very good but I'm not comfortable using it so it ended up not being used. Um, Harkin is really the uh, the one that makes it function uh, alongside Marth here who is just a beef uh, when paired with Robin, but I'm just not very good with it. And I wasn't comfortable like bringing it into certain matches because if I had, the majority of the time I had a choice between this team and this team, team two and team three, and I'm always gonna pick team three because it's just better. Um, being able to hit Brave is just, you can't, you can't like not use the Brave hits. Um, I think I went over the builds. I wanted a better seal for uh, for Mark here, but dual Mark, but really couldn't figure out what to use. Um, my Brave Corn is not very good. <laughs> uh, definitely needs some investment, but I don't really plan on using her too much, so uh, that's just kind of where she is. Katri here has the wrong guidance skill, but I haven't committed to giving her the other guidance skill, so I'm just gonna have to live with it. And then we have this team here, Krom, fantastic unit. What I would have done is I would have had both Kroms on this team. Um, yeah, I would have had both Kroms on this team if I had another unit that could take out uh, Byleth, but I don't. Um, so yeah, that's unfortunate. I think I ended up, like, 
after the SDS run, I ended up just doing some testing and I realized that what this calf team needed was an AOE unit um, because that's really just how you make this type of team work. And I think one of the best options I, I probably should have used is my legendary Lulina. Even though she's not very invested, I, I'd probably have to fodder some stuff to her, but her refine would have made this work a lot better um, because then I could have dropped Veronica who just is missing kills like crazy. Um, I like I ran into a couple of four mortises that she just is not able to kill four mortis anymore, and that's just crazy to think about. And then I would have been also able to drop Crom for another AOE unit, or just someone else who can just put out extra damage, regardless of who that might be. Even maybe I was considering putting Gulv again because after I do the AOE thing, she can go in and then like clean up whatever is left. So, um, and I'm, I'm referring to Mythic Gulvig. Um, but yeah, that's just like for the future. But yeah, this team didn't really see any action. So let's go into the matches. Um, let's start off here. Oh, well, I guess you can see where I finished there, which is cool. But let's go into the first match here. Um... I feel like this season was just ridiculously, like I had some really tough matches. Like I came across a lot of people who were just like competent at the game. So we start off with the Mark theme. Uh, Mark is the captain because I just didn't know who else to make the captain. Uh, Lies, uh, Flash of Steel, he benefited the most from having Flash of Steel because if anyone else was able to quad before getting hit on this team, it doesn't really... Uh, Celica needs to get hit. Well, she doesn't need to get hit, but if she's able to quad before she's able to pop Flare, then she's probably not going to get the benefit of the healing afterwards. If she attacks four times, or if she just attacks twice and misses the kill, then the Flare benefit just isn't there anymore. And then Nino, kind of the same thing. And also, a lot of the matchups that she's attacking into end up being red because Balith is in season. So she is typically going to miss typically going to miss kills uh, because of that. So because of the red matchups, Mark ended up being the best unit to do the Flash of Steel with as a captain skill. And then, um, yeah, he he was just able to take out the majority of the opponents that I came across. Uh, in terms of the range tanks and his dual skill. Like this unit, this dual mark, if you didn't pull for him, uh, I don't know what to tell you, man. He is so, so good. This sabotage, underrated, stall, so good. Um, it makes me not have to run uh, dual Thor. And that's one of the problems with dual Thor, her ability to kill things has fallen way off, particularly because she's a flyer, which means you have to peer her with Legendary Camilla, which I could have done on the other team, but I'm not 100% a fan of uh, Duo Thor. And on the other team, the other with Cordelia, I needed Canto Control. You have to have Canto Control for Summer Rules. You can't not have Canto Control, unless you're running a Cav line, where you don't care. if you, Basically, the Cav line, you're going to attack first, um, and basically prevent the opponent from sitting up and getting into the box. So in that situation, the Canto control doesn't necessarily matter. But if you're going to be tanking things, you need to stop the opponent from getting away after they attack you. Um, so Canto control is a must, and Dual Mark here provides that. So this was the first match. Uh, I struggle a bit with creating an opening for this team, but eventually I came up with one. It's actually very flexible. Um, this opening. Catra is so good. And as you can see there, my positioning is actually just absolutely perfect because what it does, it basically shuts down this Igrin. He is like a perfect counter to this Igrin because what she provides is extra movement and the AoE damage and he can counter both of those things. And from here, the enemy team is pretty much crippled. I can pretty much take on all of these units with no problem. Alright, so let me just play the rest of this real quick so that you can see how the match pans out. Because the AoE is gone, um, it's not safe for 
um, a green to initiate because she doesn't have the speed required. And uh, as I said from here, I pretty much clean up. Going for the captain, it's the smartest move. Probably would have been good to get a captain on captain kill as well for the extra points, but no real need to do that. And uh, this is the power formation here. Now that's something that I didn't realize that a green actually gets the AOE back after a couple of turns, but it's already too late. I've already won and uh, that's GG's from there. Um, I really didn't realize that in this game mode, Times Pulse gives you the AOE back, or maybe that's just an Igrin thing, um, because it's not supposed to do that, if my memory serves. So here we go to the next match. Yeah, man, already starting off with uh, a couple of tough opponents here. So here we got the Byleth. I think, unless you have like a lot of skill, this baby Golvig just ends up being a passenger a lot of the times because I found that she was very easy to play against. Like the majority of opponents that used her just weren't able to effectively position her. And um, a lot of the times it, it just wasn't something that I had to worry about. No one used her dual skill, which was like one of the strongest things that she has. Um, so yeah, a lot of times that was, this unit, this baby golf egg was a non-issue. Like most people don't use, or at least most of the opponents that I came up against didn't effectively utilize her. Um, the only thing that this unit, this team had as a threat was the Sonya here with the AOE, uh, Krom, Kanto Control, as I said, as a must. And, um, this Bylus has, this Bylus has to be summoner supported because, uh, that, that's a lot of HP for an unmerged Byleth, but here we go. Catria versus Catria. And uh, spoilers, I win, but you get to see the fast gameplay here. Again, my opening is very flexible, but I lose out on points there because uh, their team covers a lot of range with this Sonya here. He goes for the AoE, and as you can see, I, I position Mark knowing that that would happen. And with the AoE play gone... Celica. Celica can kill this Byleth. This one lived because he had the extra health, as well as the extra res buffs. Now, typically what happens is her goal is not necessarily to kill Byleth, but to lay down the Panic Smoke which as you can see cripples uh, the majority of the units here, making it difficult for them to then initiate. But since Krom was able to get his special pre-charged, and plus the fact that he's armor effective against Corrin, he is going to quad, well, is he, does he quad? But he doesn't need the quad, he's gonna kill in two hits. Um, and he was out of, out of range for my uh, skill to hit, so we lose our save unit here, which is fine because I get to take out their cancel control, which is a big plus for me. And Celica is still back in miracle range, which means they can't take her out in one attack. And I get to take Byleth, which is a captain kill. They kick my cat, which is a uh, more points for them. And now from here, they pop the dual skill on baby Golovig which doesn't help them because they only have three units who are all the way back here and don't threaten me really in the slightest. The only re unit, Sonya here, but Sonya isn't able to kill Katria. And I go in and I take out Baby Golvig and Sonya is not able to kill Nino as well. So they end turn and they uh, take the first action so that they can run away, but Nina moves four. Nina moves three spaces, so it's GG's from there. I, I win. Uh, they were leading on points, as you can see up at the top. At the top here, they had ten, and I had eight. But I was gonna get a kill. It's turn four. I was gonna take out. Uh, I was gonna take out uh, the range threat, and um, that would have been that from there. So this was my first loss. I played this guy. <laughs> 
in practice matches quite a bit um, in, in practice summoner duels. Um, but as you can see here, he was gatekeeping. <laughs> I play these matches as well at like, what, 4 a.m. in the morning? So that's kind of crazy that people are gatekeeping at 4 a.m. in the morning. But then again, it's 4 a.m. my time. It might have been like 6 or 7, wherever he was. Um, or whatever time it is, where, wherever he is. But that's crazy to me. And um, this is where I realized that the, uh, the Cav team that I have here was weak. You see Dimitri here, who was the original installation here. Um, I put in uh, Veronica as a late submission because I realized that there was a massive problem with this team because this Anna was simply just unkillable. I could not kill this unit because of the miracle and the fact that I couldn't outspeed her. A lot of investment here, clearly. Um, echo, echo skills, prime, well, she comes with prime and stuff, but I just, I simply could not kill this unit. And uh, because of that, I ended up losing the match. Um, not a lot of threat here aside from this Halloween Anna, and I didn't expect her to be such a great frontline unit alongside Asker and Krom and everyone else. Um, you're going to see it play out here. Pops the Miracle. And because of that, I am just not able to kill her. And one of the the the, um, the flaws here is that I got scared here in terms of going in because, as I said, I didn't have a murder-suicide unit. And because I don't have a murder-suicide unit, he's able to pick up a lot of space in the box and cover this massive range here. And... Um, I made a mistake here. Um, I should have initiated on at least Krom or something, but Selif just could not kill this Anna. She's miles faster. Miles, miles faster than me. None of my units can outspeed her. Krom can't do anything because, again, he can't outspeed her, and he dies in one attack. Uh, everyone here dies, and uh, I'm just in a, a bad position Fire. here. Easy. I just start popping dual skills because I have no real plan here and I ended up just losing capture points. And once he puts her in the box right there, it's pretty much done. There's nothing else that I can do. I could probably have tried to sneak around the back and try to take out the um, Catria, but as you can see there, he keeps taking her out of the um, threat range. Dimitri is able to kill Anna. But because he dies in one hit um, from the counterattack after her miracle procs, it just isn't worth it for me. Eventually, I do go in with Dimitri and uh, just bring her down to one health just because. And you can see it right here. But the miracle proc, and I'm dead, and she runs away. And uh, from there, I, I just can't chase. I've already lost the advantage, and uh, I'm just playing it through here just to see if there's anything I can do. But uh, this is already a rip here. GG's. I've already lost some points. And um, even this Asker. Couldn't kill this Asker. He lives with one health. So crazy. And uh, yeah, just going in here. More points for him. And yep. That's GG's, man. Um, like I said, I did win in a couple of the matches that we played in practice, but or at least one of the match I played in practice, but it just wasn't uh, wasn't my day with that team. Now we get back to basics here with the catcher ball, but I misplayed this heavily. Um, I had the opportunity to win at the last interaction, but uh, I, I pretty much threw here. Prime, base get. Maxed investment Aryan and uh, a lot of base kits everywhere else. Uh, I, I messed up here in my uh, positioning because of uh, Elencia. Um, as you can see here. Now, Claude will kill Corrin, 
because he outspeeds and he he'll get the lethality and stuff, but because of that fat, I needed to be the one to take out Byleth first. And because Alencia covered so much range, he has more melee units than I do. One, two, three. As opposed to just my three range units and my two melees. And that's kind of what it ended up coming down to. The melee threats. And I really heavily misplayed it. As do you. Next house? Over there. And he's already in position to take out my uh, core in here. And there he goes. Corrin's gone. Now I, I I am able to get the kill here because Flash of Steel and uh, DR piercing, but I'm already in a bad position here because I've lost my far save, and I have to take out his far save because before I can start targeting any of his units. Excellent play from him, um, but I, I would have been able to win from here if I had played better. Because as of this point, it's just a trading match, and um, what it boils down to here is... Byleth is still alive, and I can't kill Byleth without Triangle Attack. And then even after I kill Byleth, he'll have his two melee threats available, and that's a problem for me. Send Celica in first, because Celica will live. But Celica dies here. Cancel control. Byleth is gone. Now, this was where I, I, uh, I misplayed, because uh, at this stage, I was hoping to get the first action on the following turn, um, at which point I would have been able to either take out his captain or Alencia, and that would have helped me to close the gap in terms of points. Uh, he's on 10 and I'm on 8, but captain on captain kill would have brought me over the, uh, the, the threshold. Um, and... Even then, I could have still taken out his Aryan with uh, Nino here, but I made the wrong decision there to end turn like an idiot. And uh, yeah, from there he he wins the game because all he has to do now is run away. And um, yeah, that was I was just a big misplay on my part. I really should have won that one. Um, but from there, bounce back. And uh, this was a uh, pretty straightforward match, again, because Mark shuts down Igrin, and Igrin is basically the whole strategy here. Um, it's a good pick to have this Cordelia um, as a support tech option because she's rocking, I think she's plus 10, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay, I'm mistaken. Uh, because she has her weapon that in, uh, puts Flash on my save, preventing them from counterattack, and then Flame Emperor has the Sabotage, which is why I'm having all these debuffs, uh, which is a massive stat swing for this Validar here, who's actually a very, very potent unit. Um, the problem is that he's a Grail unit, so nobody really has him heavily invested, and um, yeah, I think that's really the main problem, but he's a, he's a very, very good unit. Um, so here... I just start making some plays to threaten the Igrin um, because I'm not able to get their captain. And this uh, Flame Emperor is near save, not far save. Let's keep it together. And there we go. Remove the specials. He did a fantastic block play here. That was such a great block play because I would have taken out Validar there. And uh, once I took that kill, he really saw no path to victory because I was already leading on points because he was outside of the box. Um, and there was really no way for him to get into the box. And uh, yeah, that was pretty much GG from this position here because everyone's covered by save. Igrin can't do anything. And my next target would have been Validar there on the following turn. Um, yeah, so pretty much GG's there. And he's just going to continue to get stalled because he's he has his units in range of Igrin, so 
it's not a good position for him. Uh, from there, uh, we draw here. <laughs> uh, this is a good player. Good player. Well, he had a, a good team here. Good team composition. I, I think I banned some of his better teams, but Otina here was a uh, a good tech option against my team because uh, I have Solika here who has the job of killing Altina, but yeah, no hardy bearing or, or sweep effects here on this team, which is a bad matchup for me. But I knew that Altina wouldn't have been able to kill Brave Corrin because of how her weapon works. She hits twice and then I hit back, but I simply couldn't kill this Altina here. Uh, once you put her in the block right there, my only option is to perhaps go around and try to take out the uh, the rest of his team, but he he has positioned really well here to prevent me from doing so. So I swap in. He runs away with the nearest unit. I could send Nino to go on like a murder mission, but um, I don't want to lose a unit that way. It wouldn't be worth losing Nino uh, just to take out one of his units. So we end up in the stalemate here and. He makes the final gambit move here to get the last action so that he can try to take out Korn. But as you can see, I already knew that Korn wouldn't have died. And we end up in a draw. GG's, very tense match. Uh, this was a loss here. Why did I lose this? I don't remember. I don't even remember this match. Oh, um. Did I did I throw this? What happened here? How did I lose this match? The growing win got me. Um, I'm pretty sure about that. Yeah, I think it was a growing win. The growing specials are... Th this is the best AoE special. Um, particularly because AoE... Um, be particularly because Igrin does so much damage. If you give her the growing win, then she's just going to do even more. But I don't remember why I lost this match. We are Let's see. Hmm... Crom is a captain. I do remember killing that Crom. You look radiant, as do you. I'm getting the extra movement from uh yeah, there's the AoE. And I was saying that uh Oh, there's no way for me to heal as well. I was saying that Well someone was saying that AoEs are unbalanced, and that's another example of it because Oh, I think I lost on points here. Yeah, that's another example of it because if the AoE is doing 100 damage, half of 100 is still way more than most units can 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 survive. Let's keep it together. So even with 50% damage reduction on an AoE, you're you're still probably going to die. Oh, I remember what happened. I remember what happened here. Yeah. Uh I was in the position to win, but then, um, well, that reposition play killed me. <laughs> well, as you can see, I'm losing on points. It's turn four. All I need to do is chase them down. I forgot that Citrine had warp. As you can see here, she isn't able to move to the spot, but on the following turn, she gets her warp, and that's how I get got, and um, I lose the match that way. Because I didn't have to reposition Mark to that spot, it wasn't necessary. Um, that was a misplay by me, he, he won that one. That, that was a tough loss, but it's okay. We move. That was a tough loss, man. I, 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 uh, I was uh, a little bit uh, sad about that one. That was a tough loss. Okay. Um, from here, Byleth, Gatekeeper. Um, he made a big mistake here. And uh, you'll see it in a minute. I really want to invest in my capture this much. 
but yeah, you'll see his big his big mistake here. He doesn't have any range threats on this team. I don't know. He's probably just like banking on uh, his captain to be able to kill everything. Um, but yeah, his big mistake was putting his counter control unit right there. I guess he didn't expect Balas to be killed, but Balas is gone, and from there. I can pretty much kill anyone that I want to kill. Um, because once I get rid of Gatekeeper, it's uh, it's pretty much open season on taking out these units right here. The next play would have been to put Katria here. And as I, as I was saying, he has no range units that can take out Korin. So, GG's. And... Oh, right. <laughs> I ended up matching against PM1, which is like just my luck. I'm having like some of the toughest matches of all time, and I ended up matching into this genius player here. Um, what'll happen here is something that really surprised me with this Tana, um, which is just the power of Unity. I was so surprised. The power of Unity and um, Rally Spectrum. Because this Yuri, this Yuri is not a threat. But uh, you'll see what happens here. I was so shocked. Tana was able to kill Corrin. I was so surprised because she outsped me. And from here, he has free range to be able to attack my units. But this is like... <laughs> I know it's going really fast, but this match took like a really long time. And it was really just down to positioning. A lot of mind games went into this match. It was very, very tense. This is this this replay does not do this match justice. This was such a tough match to play. Um, because he had his far save and I had none. And from this position, Yuri could kill pretty much everyone. So I really needed to take out this Balath here. So I chip him down first. And he's able to take out Katria, but that's fine because what it means is that I get to take out his far save, and then from here I can kill pretty much whoever I want to. Now, Yuri isn't a threat because one, he wasn't able to kill Corrin, and two, Stall. Again, this duo mark is just such a fantastic unit, and he's backing out. I take my unit out of threat range from Robin, and I go in and I take out Robin, Brave Robin, and um, that's it, GG's, because he has no way to get to me, and Robin doesn't kill Nino. Well played, if I do, so, if I do say so myself, and yep, this was my last match. Oh my god. Atso was a uh, was a, a whale. <laughs> Just my luck at I don't remember what time this was, but as you can see here, plus ten units everywhere, max investment. Look at this Cordelia man. Just look at this. What am I supposed to do with this? What is this? Like what is this? Everything here plus ten, plus ten, plus ten. And uh, I just try to throw my units at this, um, hoping that I can get something out of the game. But uh, once I saw that Brave Robin as the captain, I knew it was already over because none of my units are able to kill this Brave Robin, um, except Duo Mark. But I won't be able to get a shot at um, at Robin because I know that Krom is going to kill my save and I can't kill... Um, yeah. I can't kill um, Tiki. Yep. It's already over. I couldn't kill Tiki. She was just too strong. I was able to get her on... I think on this turn, it so happened that I was able to kill her once I set up the triangle attack. But... I didn't. I ended up not going for it because I knew that once I sent Silica in 
Silica would have died and I would have had no way to take out Brave Robin. One HP, man. That's how close it was. That's how close it was, man. And uh, yeah, he has too many melee threats. Triangle attack is gone. It's over. GG's. Ah, tough match, man. Yeah, uh, tough match, man. I feel like I had some of the toughest matchmaking and uh, I really came up against some really strong opponents. Luckily, not a lot of gatekeepers, except for that one. But it was a really tough season. I really had fun. Um, and we ended up in Master C, one tier lower than Master B, which is normally way, where I end up. But, uh, yeah. Not bad, if I don't say so myself. 7,000. I really could have made Master B. Just, uh... I'm getting closer, I feel. I think if I was able to use that Cav team, I probably would have finished a bit better, but... We'll practice. We'll get better for the next one. As you can see, the usual suspects up here. Such a wonderful... Uh, this is such a really nice Joshua, man. I really love this unit. I need to get this... This uh, infantry no... Uh, infantry no follow-up for, for my... Uh, Legendary Shez. This is what she needs to be complete. But I don't have orbs. And I think I, sh I saw the shadow there. Oh, maybe that was earlier. There's the guy that uh, I matched against, the gatekeeper. And... Um... The shadow is somewhere up here. I don't know how he does it, man. I don't know with his meme builds. He is just able to do it. He's just that good of a player. But yeah, that's it, man. Um, GG's, man. It was fun. Another good run. Um, I'm going to practice some more. I'm going to make this calf team better because I feel like you can use the calf team on pretty much every map. It's just how you lay out the team and how comfortable you are with the team. You definitely need some type of um, murder suicide unit, uh, preferably with an AOE to go in and take out units like that, um, that, uh, that green unit that I was fighting, that, uh, dual Anna. Because if I had an AOE, I would have definitely been able to chip her down to a point where Dimitri would have been able to get the kill. But then also, if I had her on the team, then I probably wouldn't have had Dimitri. So, I don't know, but... She would have definitely chipped her down to a point where I could have gotten the kill and then been able to uh, take on the rest of his team because that Anna was like just the only thing blocking me. But GG's. See you in the next one.